Welcome to Swarf and Chips. This week is a takeover show with Iamka. Anything you need to know regarding bar feeds is happening in this episode. These are the details as to what's coming up. We're covering the history of the company, Industry 4.0, the considerations you need to make when purchasing a bar feed, and the difference between and the advantages of a long bar feed over a small bar feed. Now, Colin and I, in just a few moments, will be joined on the sofa with Antonio Cibotti, who is the Marketing and Communications Manager for Booty Limited, and Clive Leonard, who is the Technical Manager for the first MTA. Welcome to the show. Now, Clive, I've just mentioned that you're from First MTA. So, can you tell us the relationship between yourselves and IAMCA? Yeah, we've been uh, had a relationship now for more than twenty years. So, I was involved from the start with uh, Mr. Sripland. We went to Italy and found IAMCA, and we found them at an exhibition show, an emo show in Milan. Uh, when we visited the factory, so impressed by the factory we were, we needed a bar feeder for our company and uh, the relationship started then and it's grown stronger and stronger as we are today. And you're the sole distributor in the UK, is that right? That's correct, yes, and always have been. Uh, we have another arm that does a service and sales as well uh, called CSG Enterprises. So uh, they work closely with us, and but we do all the sales throughout the UK. And then Antonio, I mentioned Booty Industries, so what's their relationship with IMCA as well? Yes, I'm the marketing manager of Bunsi Industries and also IEMCA and uh, IEMCA is part of the group as other brands like Sinteco, Giuliani, Vira and Riba. IEMCA is the brand dealing with bar feeding and we have this collaboration with First MTA since uh, many years, as Clive said. <laughs> A good relationship, yeah, I can you. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> guilty yeah. there, Clive. Yeah, well, I'm thinking that probably the relationships lasted longer than Antonio's been alive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, right then, <laughs> let's give it. Let's see a little bit of history into IAMCA. We're going to find out a lot about some of your products. However, th let, let's talk about the history of the company. History of the company. IAMCA was founded in 1961, and uh, in these years the growth has been big. And so today we can say that we have more than 100,000 installations all over the world, uh, about 550 people all over the world. And uh, we have the widest range of products on the market. We will talk later about that. And uh, so we are uh, the global partner for uh, bar feeding. Our vision uh, is um, to, to help end user to increase the performance of the machine tools uh, thanks to continuous innovation and uh, collaboration with uh, all the players in our industry. And essentially, you're the biggest bar feeder manufacturer in the world. Yes, we are the biggest bar feeder manufacturer in the world. We have uh, the biggest plant in Italy, uh, over 20,000 square meters uh, of uh, plant area. We have also a plant uh, in, uh, in China and another one in Taiwan that uh, we use to serve uh, the Asian market. Uh, we have branches all over the world, in the US, Germany, um, in Japan, uh, in uh, Brazil, in France. Uh, so we are the global partner partner for bar feeding. I think 32 different countries, isn't it? Yeah. Is that correct? Sorry? 32 different countries, I think. We sell bar feeder in uh, more than 30 countries yeah. uh, all over the world. I will say that uh, we sell everywhere except uh, the central part of Africa, maybe uh, Iceland or uh, <laughs> but North America, South America, Asia. Uh, Europe, uh, North Africa, South Africa, Australia, we sell bar feeder. Where a bar feeder is needed, you sell it. Yeah. So, can you talk us through the history? Because, am I right in thinking you were the initial company to create a bar feeder? Yes. The story is funny because um, our family, the Bucci family, uh, late in the 40s, owned, um, uh, founded another company which was called CISA which was manufacturing, uh, manufacturing lock and keys. Uh, and at that time, the founder, Mr. Roberto Buzzi, uh, decided, to, decided to set a team of engineers to find a solution to automatically uh, loading bars in the machines to produce uh, keys. And so that team uh, started thinking a solution. And at the end, at the beginning of uh, the 60s, so 1961, uh, they found the they found the solution, which was this uh, first bar feeder, and uh, we took six years to make the right setup, and uh, we started selling it in 1967 
in the first uh, Milan trade show. So the first idea was to work uh, with um, machines related to the lock and keys industry, but then at the beginning of the 70s, uh, we understood uh, that um, the big market was on the turning machine application. So mm -hmm. from that, uh, that year, we started developing a complete range of solutions for turning machines. And today we have uh, a solution for every kind of uh, machines. So um, what are your innovation milestones? So in 1973, we designed the multi-rack and bundle magazine to increase the autonomy of bar feeders. Then uh, um, in 1975, uh, we started using elastic material for the guide channel. So it's actually run faster and smoother. Yes. Then uh, in 1979, we were pioneer in uh, launching the pre-feeding technology. So I think that was one of the key milestones because it made the bar feed a lot shorter, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. I mean, most bar feeds before then, you have a pusher which takes your bar into the machines. It has to reach your chuck or your collet system, which is over a metre long. So that was always part of the bar feed at the back. Once they, in, yes. they designed the new pre-feeding system, they, the pusher became part of the bar feeder. So it reduced immediately the footprint by uh, over a metre. Right, so engineers are concerned about long bar feeds. This is helping yeah, exactly. reduce yeah. that yeah. footprint, OK. Then uh, in '94, uh, um, we conceived the idea of the flexible guide channel. Uh, so it was an idea starting from a multi-spindle application, the SIR, uh, but then was developed also for single spindle application um, to reduce setup times from the, from a diameter to another one. Yeah, we'll come to that later, but that, again, okay. return on investment is massively improving yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Then um, in 2003, we started using the um, polyurethane material in the guide channel, so it was a big innovation for the industry. Then uh, in 2007, um, I can say that we fixed the standard for the micromechanics application with the uh, elite bar feeder, which is able to, mach to machine very thin bars under one millimeter for many applications like the watch industry, the medical industry, mm -hmm. many and many for very, very small parts. Then uh, in uh, 2010, uh, um, our technical department designed the App magazine which is an ergonomic magazine with uh, a certification. The only one in the world, I understand, is that right? We are the only one in the world with this certification. Then, uh, in 2013, uh, we made another innovation um, uh, with the electronic and software department. So we completely redesigned and changed the electronic platform inside the Barfide. So we moved to the Ethernet technology. And this was for us, uh, for the market, a disruptive innovation. Because this technology uh, gave us um, um, a faster, um, better performances, uh, bet uh, faster change over time, uh, zero second for idle times. And so uh, the performance were, uh, were increased a lot. From what you're saying, all of these milestones I'm kind of detecting are the reason why, you know, to your USP in the market in comparison to other bar feed providers, and you're clashing yourselves as like the worldwide leader. Can we go through maybe some of the examples or your capabilities in terms of length of bar and size of bar and what machines, well, bar feeds, you've got to back yeah, that up? Sure. Uh, there's not an application that, that I am cannot provide for a turning machine. Um, as Antonio just mentioned, down to less than one millimetre, mm. three metre material. I mean, it's really like a wire. Yes, um, it is. Yes. They have the technology <laughs> to smoothly feed that and change bar, mm. uh, not only to put that into the machine, but also to load it onto the rack. There's a new technology as well. So below one millimetre, they can do. So mm. go to the other end of the spectrum, 100 millimetre, three metre long. So just going back to that one, that's the Elite machine, is that right? Correct. That's yeah. the Elite 112. Yeah. So they, there's, there's basically three types of machines, okay, there's sliding head, there's fixed head, and there's mm. multi-spindle. So you have to follow the industry as they design the machines. The bar face has to follow the, the specification of the machine. So everything is designed around the machine, but to the best performance that can give that machine. Mm -hmm. And what's your flagship model, sorry? Yeah. Okay, the flagship model is the BOSS, uh, which was introduced way back in, um, well, before we were around. Um, I'm guessing it must have been around 25, 30 years ago, the yes. boss. Um, and that's, that's the, the, the sort of 
the model that everybody's looked at throughout the bar feeding industry. So that start that went for sliding head machines and fixed head. So that crossed over between the two, and then we again progressed onto the bigger master machines and the smaller for the more individual type of bars. But the boss covers from three millimeters to fifty-two millimeters sliding and fixed, and is the most popular. Okay, so that's got a big range though, because some bar feeds are limited in terms of how much range they might go from 20 to 50 mil, for example. Yeah. But the, the range in terms of bar diameter is quite is very big on that, is that right? Yeah, exactly. And and that's how it's evolved. You know, the machine tool involves, so you have to evolve with it. But mm -hmm. everybody now wants faster, quicker, quicker chest setup times, whatever. So the bar feed has to follow that. And so I am going to follow that with the research and development. So on the older bar feeders, you could run a bar maybe 30 millimeter range and then you had to change all the guide channels and another big setup and now you can run on the boss you can run from 3 to 52 and from the master 20 to 80 in one guide channel so right. quite an impressive uh, development so engineers are worried about that you know changing over bar uh, and also having change machines and use different machines this gives a total range of flexibility oh, yeah absolutely yeah completely yeah. flexible now for the customer for a, even for a subcontractor who does small batches to a, a producer who thousands of parts per year. Also mentioned in terms of the multi-rack and things like that, so you've got your bar feeder, you've got your rack, there's a number of different options in terms of extending the rack and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, you can take the single, what every model is called MP, and in, in Italian is mono piano, it's a single plane. Sorry about my Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio's been singing about it. Like He's oh. going, oh no, yeah. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay. That's not Italian, okay. <laughs> I just made it up. No. We believed you. Yeah, that's a single plane. So that gives you a, a rack of like 300 mil on, on most bar feeders. Yep. But if you want to extend that, you can extend that single rain. You can have multi racks. We can have one a bundle load, which takes two tonne of material. Two tonne. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So. Okay, well, what we'll do is we'll find out a little bit more about Industry 4.0 a little bit later on. But I think we're going to head over now to Technical Corner and find out from Paul what the considerations are for when you're purchasing your next bar feeder. Technical Corner. Clive, thanks for joining us on Technical Corner this morning. We're going to cover a few things. The first thing I wanted to talk about is the selection process. People spend a lot of time researching the market for machine tools, but they don't necessarily apply that to the bar feeds, do they? No, they don't. Uh, in my experience, they spend an awful lot of time selecting the machine tool, competitor to competitor, and take it down to the nth degree, second cycle times, and so on and so forth. However, once you add an accessory to that, that's also got to keep up with that cycle time. So it's very important not just to tick a box and say, I want a bar feeder. You have to consider all the aspects related to that bar feeder to that cycle time. So the cycle times as well, that's an important part because people do time studies and I've been involved in that where there's been, uh, you look at a cycle time and you, you base it on the machine, but you don't take into account what improvements the bar feed can make as well, do you? No, you don't. And a lot of people make that major mistake. So if you're looking at a cycle time machine, you'll find the application engineer who's producing that cycle time for you to make the sale will include a feeding time for the bar feeder. So depending on which bar feeder you fit, that could be a length of time added to your cycle time. So it's in incredibly important that the feeding time is down to the lowest it can be and the bar change time is the lowest it can be to keep your productivity. And is that the case with IAMCA? Are they the fastest bar feeds? They are the fastest on the market. And they, for the sliding head machines in particular, they've got down to less than, well, almost zero for feeding, which is a really important point for sliding head. Because I've also been involved in selling machine tools and I've often spent a lot of time trying to sell the machine and then once you get the order you literally go back to the to the team back at base and they stick a bar feed on it that's a problem isn't it so that is a major mistake i and again i think the customer has to take some of that responsibility on board you know if i'm making a major investment whether it be saving my money or whatever i'm always looking for the best deal and if you need to to look at that you need to look closely at the accessory you you should look at that in more detail because just ticking a box can cost you a lot of money so let, let's look at some of that detail then. So we mentioned cycle time savings and how, how they can contribute to that. But what, what are the other features and areas that we should focus on during that process? Okay, so you need to focus on your capacity of your machine. So you, again, you need to use a full capacity, especially if you're a subcontractor. You need to consider going from a very small diameter to a large diameter, very small batches. You may want to consider, if you're a larger manufacturer, the capacity of the bar feeder. And so the, the setup times for the bar feeder, from, from uh, bar material to bar material, and the magazine capacity, are the two are the most important. Okay, that's kind of on the sort of uh, the, the scoping of the specification. What, what about the actual 
bar feed unit itself. Let's say, for example, that there's two of you competing in the mix or, or maybe more. Yeah. You can both meet the requirements when it comes to the, the, the size of the, the bar, the length of the bar, the speed. What other characteristics would IEMCA promote that puts them at an advantage? I would say two things really. One is the setup time. They're the fastest on the market because they have designed their guide channels now on their HD and HF models to be less than a minute setup time. So you can run a whole range of bars in that one guide channel. And secondly, the rigidity of the bar feeder. Uh, the, the main beam system on the IAMCAs are the most rigid on the market. And what makes them rigid? Is it just down to weight? No, no, the strength and design of the beam. There's one section beam goes all the way through and then the legs that also support that beam. But the, the thickness of the beam and the design of that beam which support all the other parts attached to that beam, it, that's the critical point. One important point is material range. Just tell us about the scope that you have. Okay, so I think we touched on this earlier as well, but with the anchor they can go down, at the moment, down to less than one millimetre, three metre long on the Elite 112, uh, which is a, a very specific application for the small uh, sliding headstocks, up to 100 mil, and then they can go up to 6.4 metre length. So you can imagine the capacity you can get in the running times with that kind of material capacity. Is, is, is there a, uh, any kind of weight limit of material that you can handle? Yeah, the bundle loads take two tonne. So they'll come in either on an overhead crane or a forklift because it's extremely important when you add in capacity to a bar feeder uh, to take in consideration the operator has to carry the bar to the machine or transport the bar, uh, injuries, how they lift the bar, how they load the bar in the machine. So that's an extreme important. So you'll see on the AMCA range, especially with the master, they have a new ergonomic certification, which we touched on earlier, where the loading height is the correct height for health and safety and, and, and the racks are all designed to ease for the operator for loading. We're going to go on to a point here which is very important to IAMCA. It's the long versus short. Um, short bar magazines are without question the most popular magazine purchased in the UK market. I know that's not the same around Europe and the rest mm -hmm. of the world. And there's obviously reason. There's reasons for that. But IAMCA are, are, are practicing pushing the long bar feed magazine. Tell me some of the reasons why people should opt for the longer rather than the short. Okay, as we touched on earlier, I think the return on investment is the big thing that people should look at. They're always trying to save money, whether it be the machine tool cycle times or material costs. The bar feed sometimes ignored. A short bar feeder works fine. I am going to sell a short bar feeder for certain applications. If there's no other application, the short bar feeder is the only space you can fit it in. Whatever reason you want to buy it, that's fine. We have a short bar feeder in the market. But the long bar feeder beats a short bar feeder every time. If you're looking, your machine tool is probably bought on a three to five year plan. The return on investment on a long bar feeder is always less than three years on a single shift. If you're working more than one shift, then... So, so what are the reasons? It's a, it's a, powerful, it's a powerful suggestion, a powerful yeah. argument, but okay. what are the reasons behind it? Okay, so your machine's running for longer. So you can imagine a one metre bar, you have to change three times. So with three metre bar. And if you use 3.7 bar, you get a bigger advantage. So you're running one bar, one remnant. So the cost of the remnant, depending on the material, if it be standard steel, okay, it's between one and three quid probably. But if you're using more exotic materials, brass and, and titanium, then the cost is a lot higher. You've also got the, the remnant has to be taken away by the long bar feeder and put into a, a bin in the bar feeder. Whereas the short bar feeder ejects it into your machine. Now that becomes a problem causing damage to your machine. You can imagine a billet up to 66, 70 mil diameter, 100 mil long, the weight of that, Park catch is not designed for that. So some machine tools do have a, a specially designed arm to come in and take the remnant away. That adds a cost to the machine. So if you're taking the remnant out, that's a big advantage. Okay. Are there, are there any other reasons to go for it? Because there are a couple of reasons that I'd throw at you that I've spoken to engineers prior to this um, technical corner today and ask them why they've got short, short bar magazines over long. Okay. And a couple of points that come back to me. That The first one is... Uh, and I'm sure you'll have an answer to both of these. But the first one is floor space. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm limited. You know, space in my factory is, is a premium. I want to get as many machines as I can. I, I can't afford to expand or move. Right. So the short bar magazine is favourable. Okay. Uh, and the, the second one is loading of the big bars. Okay. You know, they say, yeah, it's all very well you saying this, Paul, but I've got a 50 millimetre bar that's three metres in length, yeah. you know. I might not have muscles like you have, which obviously I yeah, have. I see but the guns, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they can't, you know, that is a possible objection. Okay. So those two, how would you get okay. around those? So first of all, the short one. So a short bar feeder, most people want to extend the short bar feeder to run 1.5 material, so half bars. 
So therefore you have to have a standalone unit, which now makes your short bar feeder about 2.2 to 2.5 meters long. Not much shorter than a long bar feeder. Within that, you have to have some guy come along and cut the bars up on a saw, unless you buy it in pre-length, which is expensive. So if you have a saw, which takes up another two meters, there's your floor space gone. And the cost of the floor space as a factory against the productivity you get with a long bar feeder is pretty negligible with it. Okay, all right. And as far as your second question, which was lifting the bars, that's why I am have developed the master up. So as you can imagine, if you get a, even a Y-axis machine, there are some spindles can be like 1.3 meters, and then you have a magazine on top. The master up now, one meter height, loading the bars off a trolley or a forklift, perfect height for health and safety. Okay, great. I, I, I get both those. There is probably one more I'd add into the mix, which may, may be flawed in some ways, but um, are longer bar feeds more uh, valuable for longer production runs? Is, a, is there not a market for a short bar magazine when the runs aren't maybe necessarily in high volumes? Again, that's where the customer has to speak to people like us or like me or like our sales guys because they can be application specific. Whereas I would tend to say to a customer, if he had a range of parts he wants to run, there's a customer we have just installed in, in Norfolk. He uses the internet to get his orders and directly downloads to his programs on his machine. But he's clever because what he's done, he's put the full length bar feeder. So he makes a range of parts from the same size bar. So he's no setup time whatsoever. So that's one way around it. The other way around it, again, with the Yamka design, is the setup time on the bar feeder, change the gripper, change the support blocks, you've got a new bar. So against the short bar feeder, where you change the spindle liner and set the bar feed up, it's, it's, that setup's probably a good 10 minutes against a one minute on the full length. Well, you, you, you must travel all your salesmen, and, and I'm sure you get involved in, going to engineers and, and asking these questions. So why are we still seeing the majority of the marketplace using the short bar magazine? Great question, don't know. Uh, we're trying to educate the, uh, hence why we're here today, we're trying to help the customer educate them on the full length bar feeder. They, they tend to see an initial investment uh, and tend to think it's that they've only got that space. But actually, in fact, most places have got space for three meter bar feeder. And so the education is, when you go into it properly and, 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 and uh, look at the return on investment, you'll quickly realise that there's a massive difference between short and long bar feeders. I, and I do totally agree with you. I think it is an, it is an education because before we started working with IMCA so closely, I would have still practised a similar, if I was selling machines, done the same before. I would yeah. have said, there's a machine, you want a bar feed, tick a box, there's a bar feed mm. that goes with it, which is obviously... I mean, another um, example, would you let somebody choose your car for you? Yes. No, no. <laughs> yes, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. But that's, you know, you're letting somebody else choose a car. You know, if you're making that investment, you need to make sure you're, you're getting the right the bar feeder. I'd probably begin to conclude this um, technical corner session, Clive, by mentioning to you, I've, I've made, taken some notes and I am currently a world leading bar feed manufacturer with over 71 new innovations and over 200 patents. That's incredible. And they manufactured their first ever commercial bar feed in 1961 and have over 100,000 installations around the world um, and are present in 30 different countries. That's, that's some... That's staggering, isn't it? Yeah. As incredible. a bar feed manufacturer. You came to the open house in Amco, you mm. saw the factory, you saw it was still working while the open house was going along. You saw how happy the people were. You see the videos. Um, they are the largest biofuel manufacturer in the world. So finally, return on investment. How do you get this message to engineers? How, how do they begin to see that this could be a benefit? To it's them? very simple. Go on the website. Put in your own figures. doesn't matter what they are. Put them in. Your own figures. We haven't, there's no magic to it. And at the bottom, you'll quickly see single shift, double shift, triple shift. All the return on investment, the savings, long against short. Okay, perfect opportunity to cut to a couple of testimonials of your customers that have purchased IM Kabar Feet. We're with George from SubCNC. We're going to find out why they use your IMCA range. But first of all, SubCNC, a huge, huge success story. And the whole machine shop is really a jigsaw, isn't it, in terms of not just your machine, your lubricant, your tooling, your software. This is part of the jigsaw, the, the IMCA machines. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. You know, the bar change is equally as important as machining the component. Now, taking a step back though, you, what do you guys actually do? Um, so, a range of industries uh, served by these sliding head machines. We do uh, oil and gas, medical, automotive, microelectronic parts, mechanical parts, you name it pretty much. We can make it out of round bar through these bar feeders, uh, we can make it, yeah. So, high precision parts on sliding head machines? Yeah, that's correct, mate. 
So, IAMCA, how long have you had these machines and, and why? Uh, since the beginning, our first ever machine was an IAMCA. It was uh, 20 years old when we sold it a couple of months ago. Um, so it serviced us really well. Um, so since that day, we, we purchased every new bit of kit with an IAMCA. So 20 years old then, what about the services support for the machine? Um, excellent really, the um, service and support we don't use a great deal because they're you know, fundamentally reliable and they get bolted down on the first day and they far change until we, until we move them on or otherwise. Now you've got a range of machines, you've got the Kid 80 which is the smaller bar feed but the majority are the longer bar feed, the Boss, the Evo, why is that? Um, yeah, so the sliding head lends itself to volume mass production parts, so obviously a longer bar, less bar changes, more parts. So all the sliding heads run three to four metre bar feeders. Okay, so getting that running time up, or so you do 24-7, what about things like a bar change? Bar change, uh, around 20 seconds, very, very quick. So again, volume parts, long parts that require a lot of bar changes, you know, where it goes through the rack quickly that starts to eat into the cycle time, so a quick fire change is a must, about 20 seconds. Yeah, because I understand that's the fastest in the industry. Okay, what about actual changeover? You mentioned guide and non-guide bush. Uh, yes, yeah, so you've got two elements. You've got diameter size changeover and guide bush and guide bushless. So our latest L20 can run with a guide bush yeah. or guide bush less system for, you know, uh, unground plastics and stuff like that. So the changeover time, bar feeder wise, very, very little in it. All we're changing is the size bushes and the, um, the, the grip of collet, you know, and that's the same for guide bush and guide bushless. It's, it's minutes. What about the idle time? Idle time, nothing there. Yeah. Zero, so, okay. Now what about uh, diameter change? Diameter change, again, it's minutes. You know, we're changing from anything from six mil to say 25 mil in this, this one here. Uh, it could be minutes, so a couple of box. The channel set doesn't need to be changed and we're up and running. Now, I know it's behind us as well. You've got the uh, touchscreen technology? Touchscreen on the latest boss, yeah. So essentially, um, the handheld unit had uh, various buttons for mechanical features on the machine. They've replaced that with touchscreen technology, nice little diagrams. And again, for the LFV, it's a program change on the uh, touchscreen. There's nothing to it, it's great. Yeah, simple to use. And super fast technology, is that right? Super fast, yeah. So, like you say, odd time, nothing. And bar change, uh, 20 seconds. So, that's all part of the super fast technology, yeah. Now, George. You told me you were really, really busy, but I actually can't hear the machines going. What's going on there? Uh, all running, mate, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just the silence of the bar feed. So really, really quiet, yeah. okay. Um, just a quick summary then of why you use IAMCA. Because um, we used them since the beginning. We tried a few other brands in the meantime, but we always came back to IAMCA, and now the workshop's full of it. Thank you, George. We're with Paul from Paragon Precision Products. Now, Paul, huge fan of IAMCA machines, bar feeds, why? I think it's the quality, the rigidity, and the reliability of the machine. Uh, they're a very, very good, stable machine. Uh, we have other bar feeds on site, but they, this particular range of machines, which we're moving over to in a big way, uh, are just a all in all outstanding bar feed. Okay, you mentioned about the bar you actually use, commercial, commercial bar, and sometimes it's not always as straight as yes. required. Yeah, it's a common fault, people will be able to relate to this. Uh, commercial bar stock is normally fairly good, but at occasions it's not, has a bit of a kick in it but we find this will handle anything like that. If it has a bit of a bend, this will handle it, while the other competitors do not handle it as well. Okay, and also, you can see the internals here, it's got all the bells and whistles? Yeah, it's got everything on it that you need, but not the stuff you don't need. So it's, it does what it says on the tin. It's got the workings of a very good rigid machine, but the, the, the front end, you know, for example, the new touchscreen. Yeah. Touchscreen is a great innovation. We've really found that a very positive step in the right direction. Sometimes these new generation things don't add up, but this actually absolutely does for the, the, the user friendliness of it. So really, I am kind of thought about what the engineer needs and given a solution. Yeah, they've obviously got their finger on the pulse. They know what they need. Again, some of these things don't really apply to what we're going to be using in the real world, but this does. And last but not least, services and support. Yeah, when we need it, we don't need it often. So we don't make many phone calls, but when we do, they always respond very quickly and efficiently. Any spare parts that we need, we always get very quickly. But I have to be honest with you, I don't get, I don't get issues with this bar feed. It just doesn't happen. Great endorsement of IMK. Thank you very much. Thank you. I mean, what brilliant testimonials for your company. That's, it's all really good, really, really positive as well. And the response, um, we've had really positive responses from Auto Turn Parts, um, l &R Precision, Maylan, Wilbar, and DKW as well. Well, a great testimonial was at DKW, Carl Iacobucci. Um, I said to him, well, and something we haven't mentioned already, your service and support. And he's, I don't know what you mean. I'm like, oh, that's a bit worrying. He goes, well, no, I've never had to use it. 
So uh, yeah. you're not the only one. So that's, just, that's a great review. Brilliant. Yeah, that's yeah. a great review. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, exactly what we need. Yes. <laughs> well, you know, talking about service and support and going a little bit further, you know, you as a company, you have to keep up to date with all the OEMs. You know, you mentioned earlier about working with all the OEMs. What research and development are you doing as a company to keep up to date with the latest machine tools as well? Yes, we have uh, 50 engineers in the R&D department. Uh, they take care of innovation. Um, they are in good relationship with all the OEM manufacturers. We have an, an area inside the company where um, we test our application with the turning machines. So they stay months there to make the right setup for the right parts to be produced. Are these the ones, the areas we weren't allowed in at the open house? Correct. Top secret. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And Industry 4.0 as a, a kind of, it's, it's what everyone's talking about now. And I feel personally it's making machining a little bit more accountable and efficient. W what are you doing in terms of the Industry 4.0 side of things? So uh, Industry 4.0 um, is, uh, is something that we started thinking uh, many years ago. During the crisis in 2009, uh, we understood that we had to do something uh, better to improve the performance of our machines, uh, to develop services, new services related to the machine. There was a big uh, project by Okuma, the Okuma Think in the US. We were invited there, we participate. And um, when we came back, uh, our general manager of IEMK, Mr. Gianpaolo Morandi, with the uh, electronic and software technical manager, Maurizio Moretti, decided to, to invest in a new big project uh, with three main goals. The first goal was um, uh, to design a new methodology to develop software for the bar feeder. Uh, the second goal was uh, um, to create an ele electronic architecture able to improve a lot uh, the performance of the bar feeder. And um, uh, the third goal uh, was uh, to be ready one day to be connected mm. in, the internet, uh, in the internet network. So I have to say that after four years, in 2014, uh, we reached uh, all these goals. Because now, consider that we can develop the um, specific software application for the needs of a specific customer in a few minutes. While in the past, we needed two months of an... Uh, really? developer so from two months to a few minutes so again working closely with the customer you can provide a solution yes we can uh, find the solution the right solution for the right application so it's uh, much quicker than in the past mm. then uh, we have been able to uh, increase a lot the performance of the bar feeder as i mentioned before with the uh, ethernet technology now we are able to um, uh, reduce the non-productive uh, non time of the bar feeder by uh, also 40%, like the bar change over time. We can do it in 18 seconds, 12 seconds, while in the past uh, we and most of our competitors were over 30. So it's a lot of money, end of the day. Mm. Also we have reduced the idle times every time the head stock moves. We, we don't uh, force the tarry machine to wait for us. So we have seconds and seconds. And uh, what's more important that at the end, uh, these new technologies, these new features can help our end user customer to increase the productivity yeah. from five up to 15%, which in our industry is a lot. Yeah, because I think Vic from Auto Turnpart said he's making, I think 60,000 components a week on one machine. So if you change that change over time and the software working with it is mm. reducing. Every second it's massive. counts, yeah. doesn't it, really? Yeah, it is, yeah. Um, okay, so um, may I ask you as well, Clive, so if anyone's watching and they're interested in the bar feeder, how are they going to get in touch? Because we've heard about the, 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 the backing that you've got in Italy as well, but with First MTA, how do they get in touch with you? How do they see I Am Correct shows? What events are you at? So how do they get in touch, really? Okay, well, <laughs> there's two main ways. They have our, uh, the websites, really. Everybody looks at websites these yeah, days. Yeah. Um, Yemka have a very good website, and we're on there as one of their agents. There's a link to that, so they can research on there. Or they can go on our own firstmta.com website and find our details from there. So we have all our other products on there as well as the IMCA. 
So that's the, the main two ways people get in touch. Or three ways, because listed on MTD C and C, of course. Oh, of course. Range, yes. <laughs> and, Sorry, video, and that's okay. Good point. <laughs> we'll put the details on the screen. Yes. <laughs> With the videos. <laughs> well, we are today. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and so, yeah, so they can do that, no problem at all. And then, yeah. of course, all the trade shows, the emos, the, the, the Macs, the, the open houses, we, we're all present at all those shows. Okay. I think as well, just is anybody who's thinking about bar feed, don't, you know, you can do all your research, but pick up the phone and get or get in contact with you guys so you can come up with a solution rather than... Absolutely. Yeah. You do need to do your research. Yeah. It's absolutely imperative. You or just get in touch with yeah. you. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yes. You'll do it for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you both for okay. joining us here on the show. And as thank we you. always do, uh, we oh. have got your uh, Swarf and Chips mugs a as a thank you. possession. Thank you very much. They are. So, they're um, going up in value. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So what's your favourite drinks? Tea. 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 Okay. It's espresso coffee. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Both in there. That's why he's Italian on the English. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always enjoy a takeover show. I think you find out a lot about a company in a little bit more depth. Great insight to you, MK. But I thought you were going to say how you enjoy doing the shows with me, Lindsay. No, never. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And here for previous shows. And as we always say, keep, keep those spindles, spindles turning. turning.